you know the hike bike's getting serious when the bike's loaded up and on the shoulders So good for you, and so worth it. Oh, end of the line. That's where we're going. All the way up there, sort of to the very tippy top of Mary's nipple. That's the goal anyway, see if we can make it all the way up there with a bicycle. Pretty sure it'll be the first one probably to ever even attempt it, let alone actually do it. The nipple right there straight ahead. A little ways further to drive and then we start to ride. Man, look at this fall colors. Perfect time of year to come up here. It's dry, a lot of nasty deer hunters, but oh well. Can't let them ruin it for me. Hey everyone, Miner Biker here. We're up on Skyline Drive. Hush up, dog. We're up on Skyline Drive to the north and east of Salina, Utah. We're up in what's called Gunnison Valley. This is the Skyline Drive road right here. This is looking to the north. This right here is the boundary between Fish Lake National Forest and Manti Lasalle National Forest. This is White Mountain up here. And just up here, you can't see it because of the trees where we're parked, but right up here above us to the west is Mary's Nipple. And that is the goal for today, is we're gonna actually try and be as far as I know, and I would be I would feel pretty safe put, betting some good money on it. That I'm gonna be the first person to ever take a bike up to Mary's Nipple. And that's what we're gonna try and do today. I've hiked it before. Most of it's, it's not bad until you get to the last stretch of cliffs, right up that last little bit. It is crazy steep. It's hard to even hike up normally, so trying to haul a bike up and down that's gonna be really tough and may just not even be doable, but we're gonna try it anyways. And the rest of the trail will be a lot of fun. So we're gonna go ride northwards up Skyland Drive a little ways to the trail turn off and then continue on up. Absolutely gorgeous fall colors up here. All these aspens are bright yellow. It is beautiful. It is very dry. It's been such a dry year. But it's still gorgeous up here this time of year. Park down the road a little ways on purpose so that I have some time here. Just easier pedaling on the road to get my legs warmed up. So once we start up the trail, it's steep. I don't want my legs in. Uh, I wanted to be all warmed up and ready to go by then. Alrighty, about a mile and a half up the road from the boundary between the two forest sections. That's where you turn off to head up towards the nipple. Starts off as double track for a little bit. Turns to single track later. Man, that is steep. Some old sheep troughs make good dog troughs too. <laughs> Especially when we have a dog who likes to actually get in the water. It's just the right size for him to hop right in and lay down. <laughs> oh, yep, nip that brisket. Sheep have torn this hillside up so bad. You better tell where the trail is. Just say there's gonna be a very healthy amount 
no pike biking yet. They get all the way up here. But there's nothing wrong with it. Huge fan of hiking biking. And I do it a lot. Oh, yep. <laughs> Almost up onto the ridge line up here. There's actually some really pretty nice cruising up here on the ridge. For a bit, and then you start climbing again up to the nipple itself. We get a break here for a bit. Whew. Quite a climb. Oh. Across the way, White Mountain. North up Skyland Driveways. Skyland Drive loops around. Up on White Mountain over there and then back to the north. This is Gunnison Valley. Trucks parked down in all those Aspen somewhere. We rode up that road. Up to around there somewhere. And worked our way up to this. It's the nipple itself. Up ahead. Whew. Yeah, boys. It's kind of cool up here. You know, the hike bike's getting serious when the bike's loaded up and on the shoulders. Alrighty, we're here at the base of the cliff here, up to the final summit. This is the ridge line that we just came up. So from here, we're kind of right on the north east corner of the nipple and there's two routes to get up there's one that goes up this corner you got to do some it's probably the more used route but it's also a little more cliffy you have to kind of climb up some pretty good ledges and stuff makes it a little trickier if you were to try it with a bike or you can cut across the flank here over to the southeast corner and there's a, another route over there that i'm thinking will be the if there's one I can get a bike up, that'll be it. I don't know if we'll get the bike up or not. We're going to try. Alrighty. Made it around to the south. East corner. <laughs> yeah. All right, so made an executive decision that uh, I'm back here again and looking at it in person and stuff. As much as I'd love to get all the way on the top and get a picture of my bike next to the high elevation marker on the top of Mary's nipple. Hey, quit barking. I just don't think it's worth it. <laughs> Not to try and carry it up that cliff because that is nuts. So I think we're just gonna leave the bike Right here where it sits, it's perfectly happy here. We're gonna hike up to the top, take some pictures and everything up there. And then we'll come back down and get the bike and ride it back down the rest of the way. There's really no point in risking life and limb, literally, to hike the bike up there, hike it back down, just to get a picture. So yeah, bike's gonna stay here. We're gonna hike up, it'll be fun. Let's go for it. See this is very similar to the pink cliffs of Southern Utah. The limestone, but this is more white. Similar type of stuff. Check out them fall colors down below, huh? <laughs> so this is West or East Willow Creek. It's when we drove up. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not trying to carry the bike up this. That would be dangerous and ridiculous. 
I say though, these right concepts, power line shoes, they're pretty good hike shoes. Not quite as grippy as actual hiking shoes would be, but not too bad for bike shoes. Nice little crevice here, sticking off the other side. Peek around. <laughs> yeah, definitely glad I decided not to try to bring the bike up this. Hey, not only would it just be ridiculous, but frankly, it would not be very smart. You would be really risking a nasty fall, or at the very least, dropping the bike and damaging it. <laughs> not worth it. Anyways. We made it to the top. Not too bad without a bike. <laughs> All right, top of Mary's Nipple. Start off looking back to the east. So this is all Gunnison Valley below us. The truck is parked roughly down there somewhere. <laughs> Up there is Skyland Drive continuing to the north. It's White Mountain, San Rafael Swales beyond. Out that way, barely see the faint outline of the Henry Mountains through the smoke. And that's all the top of Salina Creek. Across the way is Hillguard Mountain, Mount Terrell, and Mount Marvin, Fish Lake High Top. You can kind of just see the top of Thousand Lake Mountain sticking up over there. Then you got Glenwood Mountain and Monroe Mountain. And on down to the Tushers. This is all Severe Valley. You got East Willow Creek down here below us. You can see Redmond Lake out there, the town of Redmond, and Richfield and stuff's down further south in the valley. You got the Pavant Mountain Range across the way over there. Oh man, so good. It's kind of like a very little miniature plateau up here on the top. Now we can see off to the north a bit. You can see this is so this is the 12 mile canyon comes up from Mayfield. Then you've got San Pete Valley. You can see Mount Nebo up there in the distance. Over there you can see like towards Yuba Lake, Fool Creek Peak. If it was a little more clear, you'd be able to see even farther. But a little hazy, not too bad. Oh, it's pretty. It's kind of chilly up here. Of course, it is the second of October. <laughs> a lot of years this would have snow on it up here already. You wouldn't even be be here. All those yellow aspens down in East Willow Creek, just beautiful. We got a more clear view off into 12 Mile Canyon. Holy cow, look at all those leaves. It's a little breezy. That's straight north, west, south, back to the east. There's the high point up there. I really wanted to get the bike up here and ride around, but it's just not worth it. <laughs> so pretty, so cool up here. And it's very cool today. Cool in every sense of the word. That's the town of Mayfield, that's Gunnison and Centerfield out there. Woo! Yeah! Alrighty. Time to go down. This is the part I'm especially glad I didn't bring the bike for. I might have been able to get it up. Or I probably could have got it up. But getting back down is a whole nother story, especially on stuff this loose. They just scurry right down this stuff and then look at me like, what's up dad, why is it taking you so long? <laughs> I ain't got the same level of four wheel drive y'all got. 
or the low center of gravity. <laughs> nice having the bike goes on though. Kind of help protect my hands from all the sharp rock. I can put my hands down. These rocks are sharp and jagged. We got down the extremely steep part, now we're just down to the very steep part. <laughs> Went from extremely to very, so we're making progress. Definitely in retrospect, I'm very glad I didn't try and take the bike at that. I mean, theoretically it's possible, but it was not worth the risk. And that is a huge part of mountain biking, is having and knowing your own level of acceptable risk. And that's different for everybody. For some people, they've got a huge, huge high level of acceptable risk and they'll do all kinds of crazy stuff other people it's really low level and they just don't ever like to even come close to pushing their luck and play it really safe and you just got to know what works for you and and everything and and let other people do their thing a little bit because everybody's a little different but yeah trying to take the bike up that and back down it up probably could have done down that could have gone really, really badly. Just not worth it. Not just for an Instagram post or something and some video content of actually having the bike on the top. So, yeah. Anyways, that was fun. Now we get to ride back down. Let's do it. Back toward the two routes to the summit split. I'm gonna start heading down. <laughs> oh, it's steep. It's very nice. Down trees. Whew. Yeah, boys. And that right there is why I put the angle set no longer fork on this. Don't think I could or would have come down that with a 68 degree head angle and only the 120 mil fork on that 66 angle with the 140 fork that's just fine plus it's nice having the 150 mil travel dropper love the one up components post because it has such a low height inside that you're able to fit a longer post almost how snappy and nimble this the bike is too super fun Woo. so good Riding up here in the old hardtail. Cows, I thought you'd never seen a mountain bike up here before. 
don't think anyone or anything has ever seen a mountain bike up on this trail before. Raise your hand on the first one to ever do this. So pretty up here. Yeah, race you little dog. <laughs> He went on the flat and the uphill, you on the downhill, smoked the butt. Jump cow pies. <laughs> there you go, I like about having the slack, slacker head angle. Being able to lean and rail into turns. Woo! Beautiful view looking up Skyline Drive. Oh man, I love, I just love climbing on this bike. Pedal's so freaking good. Woo! Yeah. Bad for a hardtail, not bad at all. Slight head angle, nice having that big two or three breaker on right front too. Go super slow and just use that big brake to hold you back. Yeah, boys, 
made it unscathed <laughs> Especially on a hardtail. It's deep and loose. Kind of chunky. That makes you be good if it breaks. I was really impressed with the braking traction and akin to a regular tire on the front. And it's great for braking. Plus it's got a pretty squared up profile from having such a wide rim up there and that helps it too had a lot of tread in contact with the ground now we're down in order got all ripped up by sheep thankfully i think most of this sheep poo is fairly dry i don't think we'll have too much sticking to tires or flipping on legs Sad that they let so many sheep stay in one area so long that they just torn it up like this. water this one just drinks that one gets in and lays down <laughs> back on the main spelling drive road. These leaves are incredible. So pretty. Alrighty, made it back to the truck. Uh, it was quite the little adventure getting up there onto Mary's nipple. I say I've hiked that before and wanted to try it with the bike. Definitely it was all great, hunky dory, tough hike bike to get up, which is nothing new for me. I like it. Other than that last cliff section, once I got up there and was looking at it with the bike there, and it's just like that's just not worth the risk of trying to get up that. I mean, even if theoretically yes, I could do it, but this wasn't worth trying. So we left the bike below the cliff and hiked up to the top anyways without the bike and then that was super fun coming down super stoked on how the Fazari Wasatch Peak performed I mean that would probably not be the typical kind of riding most people are doing a hardtail especially coming down stuff that steep and chunky but this thing does awesome definitely helps having the slacker front end the longer fork and that great big brake rotor up front so you can just ride that front end real slow and just pick your way down anyways thanks everybody for watching 
Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. If you have already subscribed, thank you so much. And yeah, check out the other videos on the channel and keep digging up new places to ride.